Good evening, everyone. We are here, gathered together for the finals of the Romanian 2021 Public Forum Debate National Tournament. My name is Milan Jovanovic, and I will be the judge panel of the judge chair for today's finals. And assisting me in the hard task of picking today's winner will be my esteemed colleagues, eight other judges, who can, uh, after I'm done, present themselves as well. Today, we have the final debate between two teams who have fought hard to get to this final event. From the team PAP UDM, we have Miruna Duval and Petra Moldovan. Congratulations. And from team Mircea SL, we have Savopol Diana and Lasku Ellen. As we have all gathered here for the finals, I presume that you are ready to do your best to show us uh, your hard work, your capability, and also what's most important, uh, amazing debate in which you will employ not all arguments, not only all arguments that you have prepared, but also something you have learned while debating to get to this point. If there are no further questions, and if my colleagues agree, uh, we can now proceed to the technical part of the debate. If no one has anything else to add or to ask. Again, I would also like to uh, thank to the, uh, the executive committee and the tournament directors for giving us an opportunity to debate at this level. Mm. In order to pre proceed, we shall now just check our ballots. I presume that the speaker order has stayed the same. So for Team Papiu, Miruna, you are the first speaker and Petra, you're the second speaker. Thank you for your yes. confirmation. As for the team, Mircea, Mircea uh, Diana, you are the first speaker and Ellen, you're the second speaker. Yes. yes. Is that the information, uh, my fellow judges, that you also have on your ballots? Thank you very much. Okay, so now we proceed to the coin toss. As you know, public forum debate as opening task is to declare the pro and con side and the first and the second speaking team. In, the, in order the, to assure that the fairness is at its maximum level, we employ a coin toss, which the head judge, or in this case, I, shall screen share to all of you so that you all can see that the coin toss is verified and real, and also who wins the right to declare pro or con or the first or second speaking order. In, uh, according to the rules, the speaker for uh, does this. So I can see that this the coin is already being prepared. So let's go, Ellen. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we choose heads. Okay, may I please ask for the coin to be flipped? Tails, you have lost the coin toss. And in that, the opposing team, or better said, the team Papiu, you decide if you're going to be pro or con, or if you're going to speak first and second. We choose con. You choose the con side. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Diana and Ellen, team Mircea, you choose if you're going to speak first or second. Well, we're going to be second. Thank you very much. I'm going to give a moment for everyone to note this down. And we, when everyone is ready and has ready their ballots, I shall proceed to the opening of the debate. Okay. Thank you very much. So, in order for everyone just one more time so we have it clarified. Team Papiu will speak first. Miruna will open the debate. The, her team is representing the con side. And Mircea SL will speak se second. They are, Diana and Ellen are representing the pro side of the topic. Is that correct? That's how you have chosen. That's how the coin has spoken, so to say. In that case, I advise you to keep time. I will do the same. 
uh, if you go over the time limit, you will be permitted to finish the sentence. However, there will be no additional extra time given. So please try to respect the time as much as possible. Uh, as you are aware, the first speaker has four minutes. And before we begin, every team has three minutes of prep time in total allotted during this debate, which means that at any point, I will try to remind you as often as I can, but at any point, you, before you take a stand and start speaking, are allowed to take any amount of prep time. I, you are aware of that. So now I would like to move on. Miruna, uh, Petra, Diana and Ellen, are we ready to begin? Okay. Yes. Before we officially start, I wish you all good luck. Uh, congratulations on your hard work. Get, do your best. And with that being said, this debate is officially opened with the first speaker who has who is Miruna and has four minutes to give us her contentions or better said her team's contentions. Your time starts in three, two, one, now. Miruna, you're muted. Your microphone. Sorry, can you hear me now? Your your timer will be reset. It's a technical issue. It happens. We can hear you now. So you have full four minutes starting from three, two, one, now. In a modern society where effective education represents the very source of societal and economic developments in a country, essential improvements to the Romanian approach to learning are yet to be made. We as the Khan team assert that involving students in the teacher evaluation process through peri periodic standardized evaluations would be a change for the worse. And we will demonstrate this using two contentions and an alternative plan. Our first contention is the lack of objectivity. To begin with, research has pointed to the idea that student biases have a clear impact on the outcomes of teacher evaluations. Take, for instance, the halo effect, which in this context refers to students basing their evaluations of a teacher on a single characteristic of that teacher and generalizing their feelings about this characteristic to most or all other unrelated traits of the teacher. One study defined a charisma factor that explains the variances of 69% and 39% in the factors lecturer ability and module attributes included in their student evaluation instrument. The grading leniency theory is also supported by multiple authors, according to which teachers may buy higher ratings by giving students higher marks. Furthermore, a clear understanding of effective teaching is a prerequisite for the construction of the questionnaires, but the variability of teaching methods makes it impossible to use standardized questionnaires. The approach to teaching in a theoretical high school may vary from that in a technological one, and thus using standardized questionnaires will lead to inaccurate results in many institutions. For our second contention, inefficiency, we take a look at the current state of the educational system in Romania. In 2014, the OECD reports that about one third of primary and secondary teachers were aged over 50, while only 6% were below the age of 30. The overwhelming majority of Romania's teachers were therefore educated and trained before the major education reforms of the 1990s, when teaching and learning focused heavily on memorization and content knowledge, reports the OECD in 2000. This represents one of the core issues of the educational system, system in Romania. So why should we allow inconclusive results from student surveys to affect the jobs of thousands of teachers, teachers who have not been given the chance to adapt to the curriculum? Moreover, why should we invest in logistics and trained experts required for the analysis of the results and not in the in-service teachers who need to improve their performance? We believe we shouldn't because involving inaccurate statistics and personnel decisions will only lead to undue job losses and no improvement in terms of student performance. In view of this, we put forward an alternative plan. Our main aim is to improve the overall quality of education and consequently the performance and motivation of students. Thus, we propose the following. 
Firstly, providing better training to the in-service and pre-service evaluators in order to ensure accurate assessment of the teachers. Secondly, providing training programs, courses, and consultations by experts to teachers in order to ensure better teaching performance. And lastly, encouraging students to voice their opinions and propose changes to teaching approaches through the student councils in each school. By focusing on improving teacher and evaluator performance, we decrease inaccuracies in evaluation results and we improve the quality of education. In conclusion, we strongly believe that student opinion shouldn't be considered by the government in teacher evaluations as it is not an efficient nor valid method to improve teaching quality or to make personal decisions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opening speech for your team. Now we move on to the board team and the speaker too, which is Savopol Diana. Uh, Diana, do you need any amount of prep time? Oh, no. Okay. okay. So your four minutes start in three, two, one, go. Students, teachers, parents, and not only, like to constantly complain about the several shortcomings of our education system. But what if there was a way to make their voices actually heard in an official manner? Through today's motion, we aim to give a platform to all students and consequentially involve them in the pro progress made by their educators, and at the same time prepare them for their lives as future adults. But first, one clarification. The format of the evaluation papers is the one proposed this year by the Romanian government, consisting of both a grading system and written feedback on specific and relevant aspects of a teacher's performance comprised by experts according to a children's, to children's age. It will not affect the salary or uh, position in an institution of teachers, but can result in other measures like counseling or specific trainings by professionals. Now our first contention revolves around the betterment of teachers, which will inevitably bring about a higher quality of education. Currently, even if they are the primary recipients, students are rarely asked about their opinions. By passing this motion, not only do we give them a voice, but we also gain an immeasurably larger quantity of feedback compared to inspections held by one or two evaluator, evaluators, thus providing us with the bigger picture. More than that, since students see their teachers every day, they are more fit to assess their progress and overall performance than an inspector who only observes a single class, which is usually prepared in advance and thus not authentic or representative. Also, in the same way, a teacher's assessment of a student helps them understand their level of knowledge. Pupils' feedback will play an important role in determining a teacher's strong and weak points. Having a centralized database of feedback will help easily identify and investigate teachers with problematic behavior that ought to be stopped and send them to training meant to improve their methods and attitude towards students, which will create a more pleasant and therefore favorable environment for students. As for those who apply um, efficient and enjoyable learning techniques that could be spread and used as examples, they could be spread and used as examples via other programs that use the data collected. This is because all this data will be analyzed by experts so that proper measures are taken whether they aim to stop or encourage certain behaviors. All of these changes will, be def will definitely create a safer and at the same time more efficient learning environment for the students, which will result in more well-prepared adults with fewer mental health problems thanks to the removal of detrimental practices. While the and while the first contention revolves are, is about um, children's formal education, the second one is about their morale and general outlook on life and their rights as future adults. This initiative will make students feel like they actually have control over Things that concern them, like the quality of their education or teachers' behavior towards them. A study con conducted in Kenya in 2016 found that, and I quote, students' involvement in the key decisions of their educational pro process produces motivation, a sense of ownership, and therefore a higher inclination to abide by the set rules, personal drive to meet the individual and collective goals, and an overall higher academic performance. This proves useful not only in creating a more positive and encouraging environment, but also guarantees success later in life by teaching them about discipline, honesty, and impartiality, and about the fact that all relationships should be based on cooperation and mutual respect, regardless of rank. This will prove invaluable in their future jobs when they have to identify and perhaps speak out against abuse, or on the contrary, find the most suitable work strategies in the same way they did with learning methods. They get to learn their rights and that they are means of addressing any form of injustice. This leads to future citizens who are more determined to get involved when it comes to voicing their opinions on things that could be improved 
improved either by voting or by becoming active members of their communities. For all these reasons, we urge the jury to vote in favor of this, me this measure that will bring the much needed and fresh perspective of students on one of the most important aspects of their formative years. More educated children, more competent adults, and an overall higher, uh, tighter link between pupils and their educators. All this will be guaranteed by the implementation of the semestrial evaluation proposed today by the pro team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right on time, four minutes exact. Now we move to the first crossfire between the speakers one and two. The crossfire is the part of a debate in which uh, the first two speakers asked each other question uh, designed or actually with the intention of rebuffing or weakening the arguments already laid out before the judges or the public, better said. Before we move on to the crossfire, I want to ask both teams, do you need any amount of prep time? I'm good. Okay. Me too. Okay. So before we start, who would like to ask the first question? Oh, uh, you can go, Miruna. All right. Okay. So the first crossfire lasts exactly three minutes and it begins in three, two, one, go. Given the fact that student evaluations of teachers will be incorporated within the evaluation process, how do you propose that we tackle the issue of lack of objectivity? Well, I believe that um, while everyone can be a little or a little more subjective, I believe that the questions will be made by experts that understand the minds of children since they have studied pedagogies for years and that they understand that uh, children need perfectly perfectly clear questions that leave no room for interpretations and there will therefore be the most appropriate for their age, for their profile, for their school profile, of course, like you said, either they are science, they study science or human humanities or whatever. If I may ask the next question, uh, why do you think um, go, why do you ahead. think that why do you think that your solutions uh, exclude ours because this training this uh, feedback and all of these thi these things you propose as a alternative can go hand in hand hand in hand with ours and are actually included in our topic in no. our approach, we do not involve students within official matters we do not incorporate student feedback in uh, the evaluation process and we do not have the government consider student opinions because they're much too biased and they can gravely affect uh, the jobs of teachers. May I ask uh, another question? You have mentioned that the type of questionnaire or the survey used to uh, to get the feedback from the students will be the same one that is currently employed in Romania. Given the fact that that questionnaire contains open-ended questions, again, how do you tackle the issue of lack of objectivity if students, if, if students are shown the exact same questionnaire? It's standardized. I want to clarify that I didn't say it will be the exact same questionnaire. I said it will follow the the format. They will there will be a grading system with uh, points from one to five, like it currently is now. But the questions will not be the same you we saw online during research. They will be much more detailed and um, done for every age group. If I may ask the next question, uh, you mentioned outdated teaching teaching techniques. Don't you think that this is exactly a reason to consider uh, students' opinions? Because if students clearly don't enjoy this thing, uh, these things, and we actually have a statistics from statistic from Yale that uh, states that seventy five percent of students have negative feelings about school, um, we believe that this is this is uh, actually on actually falls on our side. Um, we propose to tackle this issue through training teachers because investing in the logistics required for creating the evaluation systems for students would require funds which are inefficiently spent if the if the results are biased so we uh we train teachers and we help them adapt to the current curriculum thank you your time has run out. This was an interesting crossfire. Now we move to speaker three, which is Petra from Team Papiu. Would you like some amount of prep time? Yes, please, a minute and a half. A minute and a half, noted. You have, after your minute and a half runs out, exactly one minute and a half left.
Your prep time is up, Petra. Do you require some more or are you ready to begin? No, I am ready to begin. Okay, let me just set the timer. You, as well as the first two speakers and the speaker coming after you, you all have four minutes. So your four minutes to strengthen your arguments and rebuff the arguments of the opposing team begin in three, two, one, now. Thank you. You talked about how uh, this experience will help students become uh, more responsible citizens and active members of society. But with Romania uh, living in uh, the European Union in corruption in school, uh, won't they just fall in the corruption of the educational system? Corruption that they see encouraged by their parents, not their classmates. How can you make sure that um, that this biased form of uh, evaluation will not just become a form of revenge and blackmail that students use against the teachers. Because let's think like a student, like a child. What makes a teacher good to a student? Being nice and charismatic or being strict and giving fair grades? We believe that because of the biased and unreliable data given by the students, the teachers who appear good and nice uh, will receive better feedback and therefore become overlooked by the government because uh, your plan has suggested that only the teachers who uh, receive bad feedback uh, will receive uh, training and counseling. Also, a lot of the students take out their frustrations about the curriculum who is outdated, but we are not debating about the curriculum right now, on the teachers who have no say in what they teach. So how can it be fair to punish the teachers for something that they have no control of? In need of positive feedback, the teachers will start to modify their behavior in order to not receive any negative repercussions, even if those repercussions are just training and counseling. Uh, so they will become more indulgent and they will give students higher grades. And that will uh, ensure that the quality of education drops. We believe that a teacher should be judged on their ability to teach and nothing else. We do not judge them as a person. This is not a popularity contest and a, children, uh, and a child cannot do that because they cannot be objective. How can you ask a uh, uh, a student to separate the teaching method from the person. You have also said that in the same way, uh, teachers give grades to students and assess their knowledge and behavior, uh, the same way students can give feedback to teachers. Yes, except the fact that the teachers have years of training in, uh, in have years of training and experience. Also, the students are not helpless when it comes to complaining about their teachers. We are not against feedback. Feedback may be given, but not taken into consideration for official evaluation. It is much too biased. Students can always talk in students' counsel or directly to their parents uh, or to their headmasters if they have these problems about teachers. Students do not have the maturity or the training to be able to be objective about a teacher's evaluation and no one should ask them to. We do not believe that it will make them better members of society. It will teach them, uh, it will teach them that they have power and they will use it they will take advantage of it and use it in a negative way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your four minutes are up. Speaker four, Ellen, uh, do you need any amount of prep time before you start your speech? Uh, yes, I will take one minute. Okay, you have two minutes left. And your prep time begins in three, two, one, now.
I am good. I'm done. I can start. If you say so. In that case, let me set your timer. You have four minutes now to rebuff the arguments of the opposing team and to strengthen your own. And your four minutes start in three, two, one, go. First of all, they talk about the lack, lack of object, uh, objectivity that the students have, uh, which uh, is not important, uh, really important in our discussion, uh, given by the information that my colleague told us. The questions on these tests will be made by experts that know exactly what they're looking for uh, when grading the teacher and will give um, uh, very um, uh, good written questions, not vague at all. Uh, they will ask uh, questions that will let the children give uh, as little uh, bias as possible. So the lack of ob objectivity isn't a problem in the, this uh, debate. Secondly, um, they uh, told us about that uh, this implementation of this motion will be inefficient because uh, most teachers uh, have been taught by an old school system. Therefore, they won't I guess, change their attitude uh, towards the students or, uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, but exactly, this is one of the reasons that the implementation of the motion is actually needed because uh, right now we are helping them improve their ways of teaching. We're helping them improve maybe their charisma so that the students will actually uh, listen uh, better uh, and be uh, better listeners uh, to this teacher. Um, we're helping them improve in the current way of teaching because the student uh, system, uh, the education system and everything around us is uh, constantly developing and evolving and being better and better. So um, uh, that's why it is needed for the teachers to also take uh, the students uh, side um, in mind. Um, there are alternatives talking about uh, better training, counseling. Uh, that, as my colleague said, goes perfectly hand in hand with our motion. Uh, this is exactly what we said. If a teacher has uh, a bad gray, grades, uh, generally speaking, uh, they will get uh, some more training or some counseling depending on what they lack. Maybe they lack some uh, talking skills or discipline skills with the, with the students, or maybe they lack some uh, way of explanation or actually talking to the students in order to be understood. Uh, nonetheless, they will receive the help they need. And also because this test is uh, periodically repeated, as my uh, colleague said, we will see if there are actually results or not. We will see if we need to give out more counseling to the teachers, if we need to change something up, or we will see if the certain teacher will get the counseling perfectly and they will... Um, end up being better. Uh, they also talked about that uh, we should encourage students to voice their opinions uh, pretty much not in an official manner because by their uh, uh, side, by their uh, alternative, there isn't an official matter um, for the students to voice their opinions, just them going to, we don't know actually, they didn't tell us. We can just assume going to the teacher or the I don't know, some teacher and telling them, but we must not forget that students have fear in them for some teachers, which these teachers, we actually want to help them improve their attitude. So these students won't have the courage to go and speak out. They won't have the courage to say, uh, teacher, whatever did this, this and that, which I don't think is okay and is making me feel bad. This is why our test being also anonymous is a great plus, um, on our part and will our test will actually motivate our students speak their voices because as we said the test is not mandatory so only uh students that uh feel the need to express something will fill out the forum and this is all i had to say thank you thank you very much now we come to the second crossfire of the debate in which speakers three and four in our situation petra and ellen uh, will ask each other questions in order to weaken or avoid contentions of the opponents. Before we begin, do you need any amount of prep time? I do not. 
uh, we will take uh, 30 seconds, I guess. Yeah, 30 seconds. Okay, you have a minute and a half now. Your 30 seconds start in three, two, one, go. Your 30 seconds are up. Yes, we are ready. Petra, are you ready as well? Yes. Okay. The second crossfire lasts three minutes. Let me set the timer. Also, since I believe Miruna had the first question last time, in order to keep it balanced, this time Ellen will ask the first question. Okay. Uh, the, grand cross, the crossfire starts in three, two, one. Go. Can you please further explain why is it bad that students have more power than they had before, which was uh, basically none? Because children are subjective. And as we have stated earlier, we believe that a teacher's evaluation should be done strictly on their teaching method. And students will learn to take advantage of it because as I have stated earlier, the corruption in Romanian school systems, it's at very high level. And it starts with the parents and the children see what their parents do and then they will repeat it. Okay, do you have a uh, question? Yes. If the test is not mandatory, how can you get the general idea of how the teacher teaches in class? Well, exactly, the test being not mandatory, uh, raises one of your problems that you stated, uh, that being uh, uh, choosing to have revenge on teachers, be being this test mandatory, uh, not mandatory, only students that have actual problems to uh, say or that want to praise a teacher for acting in a certain way will fill out the forum. Therefore, the data will be much more better for the experts to analyze and there won't be any like trolls being there and saying ridiculous stuff because they have to. Can I okay. have a follow-up question? Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, doesn't that only tell you one side of the story? If only the students who don't understand will uh, complete this feedback, what about the students who understand? Let's say the 30% of the students do not understand okay, what is happening. That the students that have something bad to say or that the students that want to praise the teacher will be able to. So I already responded to your questions. Uh, whoever wants to go uh, will fill out. And those opinions are the most important. If you want to uh, actually participate in something, therefore your opinion is uh, meaningful to uh, constructive conversations. Uh, can you please uh, explain to me uh, in what way the students right now can voice, voice their opinions and actually be listened to? the students can give feedback. Again, we do not reject feedback. Okay, students, but it's not legally uh, implied for the it teacher. It is not legally because it is too biased to be legal. It is much more too biased to be legal. And students can talk in student council or again, directly to their parents. Can I have a question? Uh, yeah, sure. How can you uh, say that the, your measure is more effective when you are, um, so you make the test, then you give the test to the children, then someone has to analyze the test, and then that, uh, that analysis goes back to the teachers, so it's, it's a much longer process. Uh, time, no, actually, it... Uh, Ellen, time run out. Uh, so yeah. if you want to answer the, this question, keep it short as possible, because technically Petra did finish the question before time expired. Okay, um, so the process is very easy. The students give the data to the experts, the experts analyze it, and the experts give out the school the information that they got from that data, and the school will uh, tell the teachers what they have to do, and so everything uh, will be uh, improved in a way or another. Thank, thank you very much.
Thank you for keeping us civil and very well said. Uh, so now we move on to the summary part. In the summary part, the speaker one is supposed to give us a well, not to say summary, but a short combination of all the arguments they have said to further strengthen them and to remind us of what is important for their contentions and their debate direction. So in that, uh, that being said, speaker one for the PAPU team is Miruna. Miruna, are you ready? And do you need any amount of prep time? You have one minute like, and 30 seconds left. I would like to take one minute. And I would like to take all of it. One minute. All of your prep seconds. time? Okay. Yeah. I shall start the timer as soon as I prepare it. Your 90 seconds of prep time start now. Your prep time is up, Miruna, and you have no more prep time left. So up, up until, from this point on, until the end, you have no more prep time. But in order to not keep you waiting, I shall set the timer. As you well know, in the summary, you have three minutes instead of four. Yes. So your timer begins in three, two, one, go. I would like to begin by clarifying our weighing mechanism. Whoever can most efficiently improve student and teacher performance should win the debate because the main purpose of evaluations is ensuring progress. On one hand, the con team has, uh, sorry, the pro team has advocated for the involvement of students in the evaluation process, but they have lost sight of the fact that teacher evaluation can only lead to real improvements when it is conducted by trained and competent individuals. They have failed to take into consideration the inaccuracies that may occur and the negative impact that these may have on the evaluation results and consequently on the careers of thousands of teachers. Their plan includes expending funds on the logistics required for the evaluation system and on the workforce required for evaluating the results, results which are highly likely biased. They have also stated that student evaluations are efficient methods of improving teacher performance in spite of the studies that we have put forward. And however, they have not taken into consideration the fact that surveys, the surveys they have um, presented mainly focus on attitude related issues or approach related issues, which these surveys do not address issues related to the instruction of teachers, which will, and because of this, there will be no improvements in terms of teacher performance or student performance. On the other hand, we as the CON team have demonstrated that students' evaluations of teachers are an inefficient method of assessing a teacher's performance. In view of this, investing, investing massive amounts of money into implementing the student evaluations is unjustified. Just as unjustified is basing personnel decisions on these fallacious results, which is why we advocate for a different approach. 
through our alternative plan, we do not run the risk of collecting and using inaccurate data. We put Romania's financial resources to good use by investing in teacher and evaluator training because teachers especially are the forces who shape students into future great members of society. This way, the quality of the educational system is improved efficiently. And as a consequence, student and teacher performance is also improved. We do not advocate for standardized evaluations because they're highly likely biased and they will only be a waste of resources with no, um, with no effective uh, results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miruna. Now we move on to the second summary, which would be the speaker two, and that is Diana. Diana, you have one minute and 30 seconds of your prep time left. Do you need any? Oh, no. No, 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 I don't, I don't need any. Okay. As with Miruna, you also have three minutes to give us the summary of your contentions and arguments. So the timer for you starts, if you're ready, of course, in three, two, one, go. I'm not ready. Let me uh -huh. just. I, I had to put the pin number one on my, on my phone to open it. Sorry. I'm going to start in three, two, one, go. go. As we approach the end of this debate, I want to point out one mistake done, um, which was done by the opposing team. Then, lastly, I have three questions I want all of us to ask ourselves at the end of this debate. Uh, who, who is objective and who is biased? Secondly, who, what are the ways uh, we can actually hear the students voices yeah and thirdly how do uh, do we actually fix things because after all this is why we propose any topic and why, this is why we're having debates the mistake done by them is that they barely touched the second co or second contention and the only response to that was the everlasting argument of corruption which all of us like to bring up in debates but uh, sadly was not but it was sadly not properly explained today so uh, the second or second contention still stands now moving to the clashes uh, on the objectivity versus the bias one. Uh, first of all, they said that uh, the teachers, uh, that children assessing teachers' attitude and charisma is actually a bad thing, but we believe this actually falls on our side because if a teacher is charismatic and, uh, and knows how to make the class enjoyable, the students are more likely to pay attention to them and they can make they can um, teach them in a way that sounds almost like a game to them, something that they enjoy and uh, go uh, and. Um, and like to attend because the teacher perhaps makes a joke and or um, and, and uh, speaks in a friendly tone. Secondly, on the maturity aspect, we believe that this is no issue because although we have no option but to uh, accept the fact that children are immature, we also believe that this is why we have pedagogical experts that will make that will uh, comprise this test. So they will be age appropriate. They will be appropriate for the uh, type of uh, differentiated curriculum students are uh, are studying and so on. Moving to the second question is if there are ways of uh, hearing students' voices and what the Chrome team uh, proposed is the students' council. I don't think I need to remind anyone the fact that uh, uh, student, the students' council rarely does anything. We all know that recently they barely got um, free bus passes for the for the students and even now we are threatened uh, to lose them. So I don't think they are the most efficient organization we can uh, appeal to. What, uh, what we bring to the table, however, is a um, uh, method recognized by the government. So it will be official and taken into consideration and uh, analyzed by experts, um, which is anonymous. So there will be no fear of repercussions like they implied because no one knows who gave you that bad grade or that good grade. So there will be no favorite, um, no favor cases of favoritism, nor cases of, punish uh, of unfair punishment. So, and lastly, they said that power is a bad thing, which we disagree because we believe that this trains people, trains students for their future lives where, where they will have the power to vote, they will have the power over their careers. So we believe this is actually a good form of training. Lastly, how do we actually fix things? Because we all agree we have one issue. They want to keep the old system that is- Your uh, time has run out. You are allowed to complete the sentence, but if there's more coming after that, I'll have to interrupt you. Okay. Uh, they want to keep the old system, the one that brought us here having this debate, while we want to change it and finally make students' voices heard on a large scale. Thank you for listening. And yes, that was all. Thank you. I would propose that we move along to the Grand Crossfire now. 
in which all four contestants can ask each other questions. This is usually the most heated part of the debate and also one of the more, most critical ones. So keep it civil. Uh, keep, if you don't interrupt each other, be respectful. You're all great debaters. And before we move on, I will ask Diana and Ellen, do you need any amount of prep time? Because the opposing team has none left. Uh, we are good, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> also, who wants to ask the first question? No, I would like to ask the first question. Miruna? Okay. So, let me just set the timer. You guys should do the same. The Grand Crossfire lasts exactly three minutes and it begins in three, two, one, go. Given the fact that the latest OECD PISA results of 2019 show that 44% of students cannot read or write properly at the age of 15, how do you propose that they will actually be able to complete uh, these standardized questionnaires? As we mentioned before, these questionnaires are not mandatory. Whoever has a complaint or praise for a teacher will complete them. So I don't, I also, and I think that was clear already. If I may ask the next question, why do you think that these efforts would be wasted? Don't you think we would waste more efforts patching the work done when we le leave uh, teachers unchecked than we waste on a, let's say, we do not leave the teacher unchecked because as we have proposed in our evaluation, uh, in our implementation plan, we train evaluators in order to ensure more accurate assessment. And, and if I can complete Miruna a little bit, uh, actually you leave a part of the teachers unchecked when you reevaluate only the ones who receive negative feedback. What happens with those who receive positive well, feedback? How can you make sure that they do their job properly? I told you before, um, everyone can go, the students that have something bad to complain or the students that have to, uh, that want to praise a teacher. So let's not uh, ignore uh, what, I, what we are saying uh, as well. Um, I would also like to ask a question. Um, do you believe that uh, the current situation in the status quo, um, where uh, the inspections happen, uh, do you think this is a good way of uh, grading teachers and uh, seeing whether they are capable or not of teaching a class? We, in our, again, in our implementation plan, we have proposed better training for evaluators in order to make sure that all the key factors are assessed. Of course, the current uh, evaluation system is not functioning properly, but if we do work, if we work on it, then all the, all the problems will be fixed. Yes, but how do we know uh, what to fix if we don't ask the primary recipients, the ones who come in contact with the students every day? How do we know what problems there are or what can be, or what is good? But again, how do you know the problem if you only ask, if you don't ask all the students? Again, you only get one side of the story. You keep saying that it's not mandatory and that the students will go or who have good things. Okay, but can you, can you please answer our question? Uh, how do you know what to improve if you don't know the student side? Any concerns related to the teaching approach or other issues that students may... Uh, may come across in class can be discussed in debates within the student council. For instance, students who have something to say can Your discuss with their- Your time has run out, but finish the sentence. Just with, do not talk too long. Okay, with those who represent them in the student councils. And then when these problems are addressed, they can be fixed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry I had to interrupt you, but the rules are the rules and we all have to abide by them, judges and contestants. We now come to the final part of this debate, which is the final focus, which speaker three and four will deliver to us. This lasts two minutes per speaker. And what's important in the final focus, you are not allowed to use any new arguments. You may, however, introduce evidence that supports the arguments you have made before. With that being said, uh, Petra, you have no amount of prep time left, so asking you if you want some is obsolete. I'm ready. So I will start your timer in three, two, one, go. 
throughout this debate, we have never denied that the education system is flawed. We know change is needed, but we do not believe that this change can come through the form of official feedback from students. A professor should be judged on their ability to teach, not how easy they give grades or how charismatic they are. Students, unfortunately, do not have the maturity or the training to be able to separate the two. How can, you, how can it be stated that what the students say, it is the absolute truth, when we have studies uh, that show that they do not possess the ability to be objective? How can you ask children to separate the teaching method from the person? You cannot and you should not. This is why we have proposed the an alternative plan through the implementation of training from specialized committees that analyze the professor teaching methods and nothing else. Feedback is valuable in order to create conversation between the students and the teachers or uh, debates in the uh, students' council, but it is much too biased to be used in official matters. We have never stated that we want to eradicate feedback, nor have we denied its importance. We have just said that it's simply too subjective to be used by official institutions. We know the change is necessary, and for that we and for that we have provided the alternative plan stated earlier. Through the opposing team's way of implementing of implementing this measure, not only the evaluating time is longer and more complicated, but they only receive data from a certain number of students, uh, the ones who have something to say, without getting the idea of the bigger picture. And in conclusion, uh, they only uh, assess uh, a certain number of teachers. In conclusion, we believe that in order to protect the teachers and the students from corruption and unreliable data evaluation and to restore the quality of the educational system, the teachers' evaluation should be done by professionally trained specialists. Thank you. Okay, you were in the middle of a sentence and you didn't continue, so that's okay. And now to close this debate, Ellen, do you need any amount of your remaining prep time? Uh, yes, I will take all of it. And how much is it? I believe you have 90 seconds left, uh, oh. according to my tabulations. You used one minute, then 30 seconds, then one. now you have one minute and 30 seconds left. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Your prep time is up. Yeah. So I will now set up the two minute timer for the final, final focus. Okay. And with that, we will bring an end to this debate. So your two minutes begin in three, two, one, go. So first of all, I want to talk about their uh, idea, their solution, one of them, their solutions about the student council, which, um, they say is basically a uh, replacement for our idea uh, by inclu including their uh, the students' opinions. Uh, as we see in the as we see in the status quo, the student council 
doesn't really do much for the students because if it were to do something, uh, we wouldn't have this debate right now. The students' opinions would have been already heard and the teachers uh, would have been uh, improved by now. Uh, so we see that this idea uh, doesn't work. Uh, moving on, um, they uh, continue on saying that we have to, that the teachers will be improved uh, by experts and we won't uh, count um, students' uh, opinions. But uh, what they uh, believe and what they don't want to see is that we can't improve teachers if we don't ask the actual recipient how uh, they see the whole um, teaching part, how they understand everything, okay? Um, also, the test. Uh, they still ask us questions whether uh, the subject will be there or if the importance of the subject will be there. Okay, so the test will be, first of all, age appropriate, will have only relevant questions in it and will not be mandatory. Therefore, the answers will be way, uh, way more important. Uh, their alternative on, uh, on the other side is uh, basically what we are saying, but without involving the students, which as we said, we can see, uh, we don't know that we don't have the certainty of uh, an improvement actually happening if we don't know that what we're implementing, what we're implementing will actually work. We don't know if the students will uh, have um, a better understanding of the subject, let's, let's say. And uh, lastly, I want to talk about our sec second argument. It wasn't uh, enough uh, uh, rebuttaled by them, nor explained enough why it's not a good uh, idea, and or therefore uh, it still stands, and also it being a long-term Your time is up. Argument. Yes, and therefore it being a long-term argument, uh, it uh, waits more. Thank you. So, with that, we have concluded the speaking part of this debate, and we can move on to the judging part.